Hey guys, uh, Mr. Burns here, uh, bringing you another math video. This one on uh, sort of a polynomial word problem involving cubics. So uh, this is a question I gave on my test and it wasn't particularly done well. Um, and it's, it's sort of a tricky question, but it's not really that hard that I wouldn't think that expect it to be done well. I think it's just that when you put yourself out of the context of find the x-intercept sometimes or a question that's directly asking yourself, sometimes you might forget exactly what to do. So um, in solving a question like this, it says a number and its cube differ by negative 24 algebraically determine the number. It's really important to state what variable you're using. So we're going to say that the number that we're talking about, so the number is just x. So we're going to give it a label. It's just x. So it's cube is going to simply be x cubed. So it says a number and its cube differ, so that means x minus x cubed differ by, or differ means subtract, negative 24, so we end up with that. Then we can rewrite, rearrange that so it looks like a typical cubic that we'll be solving for the zeros for. So negative x cubed plus x, so I just basically rearrange the order of those guys, and that's equal, to, uh, sorry, that's plus 24 is equal to 0. So I just basically add it 24 to both sides, just like that. And that leaves me with this guy. So what I have to do now is I have to um, solve this guy by some method. So really the only way that my students uh, know that's going to work for pretty much any cubic is the integral 0 theorem. So if we, with the integral 0 theorem, what we do is we do the possible factors of 24. So the possible factors of 24. So that being the constant of the given equation, so 24. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 12, and then plus or minus 24. So there are a lot of 16. So um, we need to be able to check these so um, efficiently. So really what you would have to do is you'd have to start, you know, plus or minus 1, Plus or, or sorry, plus or uh, p of one, p of negative one, p of two, p of negative two, p of three, p of negative three, and so on and so forth. Obviously, that would take you a long time. It took me just like a minute just then, just to write out that many and not even calculate them. So, ultimately, what you would have to do is you take this one back in, put it in this equation right here, and see what it equals. So let's just try one. So if I put one in for here, that's going to be um, negative. 1 cubed, so 1 cubed is 1, plus 1, plus 24, so that actually is just going to equal 24, so that would be my first one. Now, what I tell my students, because they have access to TI-83s and TI-84s, is go ahead and put this in for your y equals, then press graph, and look at the graph, and then have a look at the table, so second function graph, uh, or second function table, whatever you want to consider it to be, and have a look at the table and look for where y is equal to 0. So if you did that, what you'd actually find is that p of 3 equals 0. So you would get to that point, and then once you get to there, you don't need to do any more. So you would find that, you know, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, this one doesn't work, and none, none of the other ones work. So you can plug them in. That's time-consuming. You can use a calculator to check. That's a lot easier. So once you have that done, we need to see, are there any more solutions? So what we do is we synthetically divide this guy by uh, x minus 3, or we'll just use 3 for our synthetic division. So 0 here, because there's no x squared term, we're going to put 0. So negative 1 is coefficient of x cubed. 0 is coefficient of x squared. Then 1 and 24. Put down the block. Negative 1. Negative 3, negative 3. So I brought down the 1. 3 times negative 1, negative 3 that I'm adding negative 3, 3 times negative 3, negative 9, 1 plus negative 9 is negative 8, then 3 times negative 8, negative 24, and then I add them together so I get 0. So that's really important. So if I look at this guy, now I have a quadratic. You have to have 0 here because that means it's a factor that this is true. So what I have here now is negative x squared minus 3x minus 8 is equal to 0. 
So I can do then x squared plus 3x plus 8 is equal to 0. So this is a quadratic that now I have to attempt to solve, so it's not factorable. So what I can do is try a quadratic formula with it. So I have um, negative 3 plus or minus square root of 3 squared minus 4. Uh, a is 1. C is 8. Divided by 2a, or just 2. So what you can see, I am going to end up with a negative underneath the root sign. So I'm going to have 9 subtract 32, which is going to give me negative 23. So that is a good thing for us, because that means we're done. So what that means is there are no other solutions to this equation, only 3. So let's see if it works. 3 subtract 3 cubed, so 3 cubed is um, 27. So 3 subtract 27 is negative 24. So the number, let's see if I got enough room here to write a little sentence, the number is x equals 3. And we're done. That's it. There are no other solutions. We proved that. The quadratic formula doesn't work out. Um, you might want to make a statement about that if you're on a test since the quadratic formula does not work. Um, we have a negative underneath the root sign, so it means there's no more real solutions. Um, therefore, the only solution is the one we already found, x equals 3. All right, guys, I hope that helped. Um, I'm hoping uh, that this will help my students with their polynomial word problems, and I'm hoping that's going to help you guys as well. So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.